Alright guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today. For this one, we are going to do another out and about video for you. So today, I'm over in mainland China, in Shenzhen, in the Nantong area, and we're going to check out this place behind me. This is Bionic Brew. I've heard from quite a few of the folks in Hong Kong that this place is pretty good. So we'll do as we always do. We'll go in, we'll have a little look around, we'll try some of the beers, try some of the food, and I'll catch you guys in a little second. Cheers! Yeah guys, so this is the place right in front of me. I'm standing up on a little kind of pedestal at the moment, but if you look up there, it's quite cool this district. It's got a kind of older sort of shopping street and things. Yeah, because most of Shenzhen is a city that's been built up in the last kind of 20 years or so. Uh, but you do have things that seem a little bit older like this too in certain places, which are pretty cool. But yeah, when you come in, you can see the Bionic Bunny up here, yeah, you can see Bionic Brew and uh, yeah, they've got the sign over here as well, but it's a pretty nice looking bar actually. So yeah, there are your opening hours of course. And when you come in, it's uh, quite nice and quite modern. You're greeted by the big Bionic Brew sign, looks like a record actually. And uh, yeah, the bar is pretty nice, pretty modern. We've got our menu up there. And yeah, you can see there's some nice artwork on the walls. And this guy is Mr. Ang. Ang is an old friend of mine from Durham when I did my teaching license. And uh, yeah, he's moved to Hong Kong as well. So you'll see him joining in some of these videos, I think. Are you happy to be drinking beer, Ang? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right. So the first beer has arrived. Let's do our first tasting then. Number 10. Number 10. There we go. Let's do it. Right guys, well, time for our first tasting then here at Bionic Brew. So, um, as I often do in these videos, I went for something light to start off with. So, they have a Pilsner on the menu, a Czech Pilsner called Daybreak. It comes in at 5% ABV, they're saying 40 IBUs. This should be pretty damn nice. I'm quite curious to see how close this is to what you'll actually find in the Czech Republic. So, yeah, you can see. It pours this lovely kind of pale golden straw colour. When it came out, it had about a half finger of a frothy, I would have said perfect white head. And you can see that it's got a nice nice transparency to it there as well. Maybe a little tiny touch of a natural haze. One or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass. A few little ones just going up toward the, uh, the surface of it there. But overall, it looks pretty much as you would expect from this style of beer. Um, yeah, let's have a wee look at the aroma then. Quite curious about this. Ooh, it smells really nice. Very smooth and very kind of fresh, actually. Um, aromas giving me good, good vibes so far, actually. Quite a difficult style to get right, this, actually. So, yeah, one of the main differences, I would say, you have German Pilsners and you have Czech Pilsners, although the style originated in the Czech Republic, the city of Pilsen, which was lived in by both ethnic Germans and ethnic Czechs. It was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but the style was originally developed in the 1840s or 1860s, I forget, by a, a Bavarian brewer, and that, of course, is Pilsner Urkel Pozhensky Prazdroy, the original Pilsner. Um, but yeah, the Czech ones tend to be a little bit more kind of spicy because of the nature of the Czech zat uh, Zatitz hops, Sats as they're known in German. Uh, the German ones tend to be a little bit more kind of um, oily, I think, actually, and they've got a slightly different taste with their hops as well. So the Czech ones are a bit more dry and bready, the German ones are a little bit more kind of biscuity as well. So yeah, I'm curious to see what this is going to have in store for us. But the aroma of this one's very nice. You've got a lovely little bit of kind of white bready bread crust, soft white bread in there. You can smell the dryness of the Pilsner malt in the top of your nose. There's a little bit of, um, yeah, there's a little bit of like McVitie's digestive biscuity character in as well. Maybe a little bit of brown bread too. So yeah, bread crust, a little bit of wood, a little bit of cracker. Brown bread, white bread, Pilsner malty dryness, McVitie's digestive biscuit, a little tiny bit of caramel, and the, um, yeah, and the, yeah, the, the yeasty side of this one's a little bit between white and brown bread, actually, which is kind of interesting. So yeah, aroma-wise, the malty and yeasty side of this thing is pretty spot on with what you would expect from the uh, from the style. On the hoppy side of things, then, um, there's a little touch of earthiness in there, as you're always going to get with the noble-type hops. Um, there's a wee bit of like a 
kind of woody character as well, which is nice. A wee bit earthy, a wee bit woody, but mainly slightly floral, but quite wet and quite grassy, actually. So, yeah, these are all things that you would expect. On the fruity side of the beer, there's a good little bit of like oily pear, a little bit of sultana, um, some drier apricots maybe. Yeah, pear, sultana, dry apricot, I think, is probably a good way to sum up. Maybe a little hint of like a, a slight lemon and lime or something at the very, very front of the nose. But all in all, the aromas that this one's given out are very good and I'm pretty sure they're using authentic Czech malts or at least German malts in this one. Um, because it does smell very, very familiar in that way, but your yeast and your malts, of course, are the things that are going to make, uh, that are going to give you that side of the pilsner. But um, yeah, all in all, I think this one could be really quite interesting. So um, yeah, let's have a taste of this then and see how we go. So this one is called Daybreak Pilsner, Czech Pilsner, 5% uh, ABV. This one should be really nice. Let's get stuck in. Slandra, Skoll, cheers, Gambay. That's pretty nice. That is pretty good. I would say, in comparison to what you're going to find in the Czech Republic, no. this one. Oh, she's seen me. <laughs> awesome. Oh, we just got a little flight. Um, compared to what you're going to find in the Czech Republic, this one is a little bit like wetter. And I mean, obviously, Shenzhen, the, the Guangdong province, generally speaking, is a lot more kind of humid and things than you'll find in the Czech Republic. So quite often the beers are just that little bit wetter, you know, they want that element of refreshment to them. But um, yeah, this is good. Certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again, actually. Solid Pilsner. The softness of it gives it a wee bit of a kind of German Helles or Czech Svetli kind of um, vibe to it, but still it's quite nice. It's not quite as, it says it's 40 IBUs, but it doesn't come across as quite that bitter. It's very smooth, actually. It might just be the, the tap condition, but really nice. Yeah, hard style to get right, but I think they've done it pretty well actually, so thumbs up to them. Let's break down the flavour then. At middle third of your palate, you can feel the backbone of the beer, fresh white bready bread crust, a little bit woody, a wee bit cracker above that, you've got a kind of wholemeal brown bready layer, and then you've got the nice wet kind of Pilsner malty character sitting on top of that, which is great. Um, yeah, oh my sandwich just arrived, I'll show you the guys this one in a minute, this looks really good. Um, but yeah, you've got that nice soft white bready Pilsner malty character in there. Then you've got, um, yeah, you've got the white bread, the Pilsner malty dryness, which is a little bit more dry and crisp further back on the palate. Then on top of that, there's a wee bit of like, um, there's a little bit of like McVitie's digestive biscuit. Um, and a wee touch of caramel in the middle of your palate there. And you can feel it gets a wee bit more crisp and grainy into the aftertaste too, which is nice. So, yeah, middle third of the pile on this one is really nicely done. But yeah, that is good. Um, on the back third of your pile then, you've got similar things there. You've got the bread crust, the cracker, the brown bread, the white bread, and then the dryness of the pills and over the top of it. But you've also got the yeasty side of the beer. The yeasty side of the beer for me is kind of like brown bready at its core and a bit more grainy, but then as you move further out from that, it gets a little bit more white bready and sort of bread crusty. And definitely, yeah, back third of your palate, you feel the flavour's taller. Then as you come further forward into the middle third of your palate, it just kind of condenses down and uh, squashes together that little bit more. So, um, yeah, it's kind of everything you'd expect. Poppy side of the beer, a little touch earthy in the back corners of the palate. As you move further forward, it's just that little bit more kind of um, woody I would say and herbal and as you reach the front corners of your palate it's a little bit more floral and sort of aromatic and then round the front curve of the tongue it's a little bit lighter and more sort of uh, grassy I would say. You do get a bit of bitterness building up in, uh, into the aftertaste for this one. Front third of your palate of course you've got the kind of bready stuff underneath again the bread crust, the cracker, brown bread, white bread but then you get that nice oily bubble where the fruity esters roll the way out of the beer. So let's have a wee look at that then. The fruity side of this beer for me, it's um, 
yeah, I would say the fruity side for me, it's got a good little bit of kind of sultana to it actually at the back of that front third of your palate. As you move further forward, it's a little bit more oily and peary, and then you get the dry kind of apricot in the middle of the front third of your palate. Then as you move further forward from that, it's a little bit sort of, it has a wee touch of that lemon limey kind of character as well. These are all things that you would expect of the Czech uh, Pilsner in this one. Um, it's interesting though, as I say, it's not quite as spicy and floral as you might get from some other ones, but um, it's really nicely done. And I think we've said everything we need to about the flavour, so let's round off this tasting with a wee look at the mouthfeel. For me, light-bodied beer for sure, maybe in the mid-range of light-bodied. The carbonation is quite smooth in this one. Like I said, it's quite a wet, uh, Pills this one. I noticed they're not. They're using the kind of um, vertical taps, the pull taps, rather than the kind of um, turning ones like this, as you wouldn't check. So that might explain some of the mouthfeel a little bit as well. But um, yeah, it has quite a soft, quite a wet mouthfeel. The IBU it tells you on the board is 40. I wouldn't have guessed that actually. I would have thought it was about 30 because it's not too bitter. But the malt has a wee bit of dryness underneath, the smoothness in the middle, slight sweetness on top, and then yeah, you've got that lovely little bit of fruity character coming out of this beer as well. But all in all, really nicely done Pilsner, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. But it does have a wee bit of a more Hellas and um, Schwetli type vibe to it. It's not quite as dry and bitter as you might find from this style in Czech, but I enjoyed it, that's the main thing. So let's leave it at that for this one. My food's just arrived, so I'll show you that, and uh, we'll see about doing some more beers in a little bit. Cheers. All right, guys, so let's have a little look at the menu then here at Bionic Brew. So yeah, they've got 13 beers on tap, and I didn't realise until I'd already ordered the first one, this little red sign here means it's like a, a guest beer. So there's just a few of their own things on tap just now. So yeah, they've got the Bionic Ale Pale Ale, Bionic Head version 2, which is the hoppy lychee cider. That sounds quite interesting. Chocolate City Porter, we might need to finish on that. Crickside Kulsh. And then yeah, all these other ones with the red are... Uh, guest beer so you've got um, player BA May IPA I'm not really sure what that is then a New England hazy Belgian wit beer Goza American pale ale the Czech Pilsner which we just reviewed uh, a double IPA this one's from Beijing and uh, then another American pale ale down there and a beer cocktail so good selection of stuff but not that many of their own things on the menu today but I think the next beer that we'll try will be this one, the Bionic Ale, because I was told this is their kind of flagship beer. So let's get a big one of those and see how it turns out. Right guys, so time for tasting number two then at Bionic Brew. So it turns out the last beer that I tried wasn't actually one of Bionic Brew's own beers because the little red symbol means that it's a guest beer. So that Pilsner I tried was actually from a Belarusian brewer who lives here in the Shenzhen area. So um, yeah, kind of interesting that. But now we're actually going to try one of Bionic Brew's own beers. And um, something happened when I ordered this one that's, that's quite funny. Ang and I got a good laugh out of this. So there's two sizes listed and um, they tell you the different shapes of glass on the, the screen as you might have seen. But um, yeah, I ordered a big one and I got given this. So I got a litre of uh, pale ale. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's kind of how it goes. It's kind of funny coming to China and sometimes stuff just gets a bit lost in translation. So yeah, I got a litre of uh, Bionic Ale, which is uh, an American pale ale, 5.6% ABV. So yeah, um, wasn't quite expecting that. I thought when it came in the sort of stein, uh, it was going to be a half litre, but apparently not. So the price actually is quite good for this. It's 88 RMB for a litre of beer. So um, yeah, it's, Ang and I actually thought it was going to be a little bit expensive before that, but then yeah, we saw the size of it. And to be honest, 88 RMB for a litre of beer, I think is pretty good. So here we go. But um, yeah, anyway, you can see that this one pours a lovely sort of, um, I would say kind of medium amber colour, which is kind of what you'd expect. It's got a little bit of like uh, natural haze to it, as you can see if I put my fingers behind the glass there. When it came out, it had about a finger of a frothy, I would say kind of cream coloured head there. But overall, it looks pretty nice. We actually have a small glass of this one as well, um, which you can have a little look at. So 
there you go, there you can see the uh, the small glass of this one, which you probably could just pour in the top of this. We'll give this one to Ang. Ang can have the small one. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably need to share more of this with him later. But yeah, um, let's have a little look at the aroma then and see how we go. But this one, it's kind of what you'd expect appearance-wise for an American paleo. So yeah, I mean, it's it's got everything you'd want. You've got that nice little bit of like brown bready bread crust in there sweet brown bread, a little bit of white bread. It smells proper old school this, it, it's like, um, I think this is using maybe old school sea hops, there's just something really kind of nostalgic about this, maybe a little bit of like Cascade, Centennial, a bit of Citra, something like that. Um, yeah, something very nostalgic about this, but yeah, brown bready bread crust, a little bit of like yeah, that little touch of woodiness that you often get. Sweet brown bread, a little bit of white bread, some toasty brown sugar, a bit of an oily caramel as well for sure. It's got quite a pungent volume, I would say, for a for a paleo. It actually the aroma's behaving a little bit more like a straight up IPA. And remember, the paleo is the little sister, if you like, of the uh, the IPA, um, or the little brother, whatever you want to say, the younger sibling. So yeah, the malt base on this one is pretty damn nice. But you can tell with this beer as well, it's got a good little bit of dankness to it. So quite a little bit of early edition hop going into this one. You are going to get a little bit more bitterness out of this. Although it does say only 28 IBUs. So I just need to see. But um, yeah, you have got a nice little touch of, there's a wee tiny bit of earthiness in there, but big, big, very pungent floral notes out of this beer. Good little bit of grassiness as well. Um, yeah, mainly floral. There's a little touch of pine resin, a wee bit of floral spice, as I was saying, and then um, that little bit of um, that wee bit of kind of zesty grassiness in there. Fruity side of this one, I'm pretty sure there's cascade in this because it's giving you that little bit of grapefruit, but also that kind of like figgy. Um, yeah, it's giving you that little bit of like figgy sort of. Um, Sultana type note, figgy kind of peary type note that Cascade will get you too, but there's def I'm pretty sure there's some citra in this, because there's big juicy mango, there's that little bit of peach, and there's a wee bit, could there be a bit of Nelson Sovian or a bit of like mosaic or amarillo in this one? It does have a wee bit of an orangey note to it as well. Like, like I say, this, this beer is quite old school. Like, there's something just very, very familiar about it, so I think old school sea hops or like you know citra cascade maybe a bit of centennial because there is that wee bit of lemony character to it and then yeah you've got that kind of orangey type note coming out of the beer as well um, but all in all the aroma of this one is really nice and properly old school so um, yeah I think this is going to be pretty damn good so we'll have a taste of this one now and see what it's all about so this is my liter stein that I wasn't expecting to get of Bionic Ale, 5.6% ABV, an American Paleo, Slanju, Skull, Cheers, Gambe, let's do it. That's pretty good. Um, first impression is, you can tell this one's quite fresh, this is really fresh, because it does still have, it has quite a little bit of like bite to it and things, which is what you want in honesty. But it's not going to be hard to drink a litre of that in all honesty. Um, yeah, the this beer gives you everything you would want from an American Paleo though. It is a little bit more kind of ready leaning I would say but it gives you a little bit of sweetness into the aftertaste there's a good little bit of bitterness there I don't think saying this is 28 IBUs is quite right I will say that I think they've got the IBU wrong on the board in front of me but um, yeah this one is pretty interesting in that regard I have to say that um, yeah so Let's just break it down a wee bit then. The backbone of the beer, um, 
you've got, if you go to the middle third of your palate, you've got that nice little bit of brown bready bread crust in there. There's a wee bit of, um, there's definitely a little bit of that kind of woody character in there, a wee bit of cracker, some brown bread, the white bread sits above that, a little bit of toasty brown sugar as you would expect. Then in the dead centre of your palate, you've got that wee bit of like oily caramel, which I think is really nice. So yeah, that is good. That is very nice. Um, the oily sweet caramel in the middle of your palate, there's that little bit of booziness. You've got the biscuity character around it as well. Yeah, in the middle third of your palate, you're getting everything you'd want from this. But again, very fresh in its hoppy character. The malty side of things is quite impressive with this one as well. So um, yeah, I like. I do like how this, this goes together in the middle third of the palate. Let's go to the back third of the palate then. So. Again, it's behaving quite similarly. You've got that little border region there, the brown bread, the white bread, and a wee bit of uh, kind of crisp bread on top of that. You've got your bread crust, your brown bread layer, which is a little bit lighter, taller, and more airy. Your white bread layer, which is a little bit lighter, taller, and more airy. And then, yeah, above that, <coughs> you've got just a little bit of uh, a more kind of Pilsner malty type quality. Then you've got the yeasty side of things too. So, um, yeah, the yeasty side of this beer for me a little bit brown bready at its core, but then, yeah, it's got a little bit, a little bit kind of brown bready at its core, but then more kind of white bready um, and bread crusty the further out that you go. So that's quite interesting. Mm. But yeah, hoppy side of things, for me, <clears throat> a little bit earthy in the back corners of the palate. Then as you move further forward, it's got a wee bit of a kind of herbally, woody sort of thing coming out of it. And then, yeah, as you push further forward, there's a wee bit of pine resin underneath, some spicy floral aromaticity. And then, yeah, around the front curve of the tongue, it's uh, a wee bit lighter and more uh, grassy, I would say. So, yeah, the way, that that, the way that this goes together in that regard is very nice too. Let's round off then with a look at the front third of your palate and the fruity side of things. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get that nice little bit of bready build up in there. The brown bread, the white bread, things like that. The base of the front third of your palate is the brown bready bread crust. Then, um, yeah, brown bread, white bread, a bit of a smoother thing. So I wonder if this has got a little touch of wheat in it. Wouldn't surprise me. But then, yeah, you get that nice oily bubble where the fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. So for me, the fruity side of this one at the back you get that nice little bit of um, grapefruity character. As you come further forward from that, there's a wee bit of... Um, <clears throat> as you come further forward from that, there's a little bit of a more kind of peach and ripe mango, I would say. So you've got that peach, that ripe mango kind of character. And then, yeah, you have uh, a little bit of that more oily pear thing. I'm pretty sure there's... Uh, Cascade in this and Citra. I'm pretty sure those two hops are in here. But then, yeah, as you move further from from that, you've got that oily kind of peary, sultane type character. And as you go into the front half of that front third of your tongue, it's got a little bit more of a um, yeah, it's got a little bit more of a kind of oily, um, <clears throat> orangey sort of character. So um, yeah, the way that all of that pieces together, I think, is uh, is really quite nice. So, get some thumbs up from me. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a kind of lemony, limey character in there, just behind the very front tip of the tongue. But yeah, orange, it, I think cla classical, you see, classic sort of Amarillo, mosaic maybe, um, Citra Cascade type IPA, this uh, Paleo. But it does behave a little bit more like an IPA in fairness. But um, it, yeah, the way that that goes together is nice. Let's round off with a wee quick look at the mouthfeel. For me, uh, Kind of mid-bodied, carbonation does have a wee bit of crispness to it, slightly oily in its mouthfeel. Like I said, I think the IBUs in this one are a little bit higher than the 28 that they say. I feel this beer is maybe about 50 or I think it's maybe about 60, it could be 70 IBUs actually. But then yeah, you've got the breadiness and the malt base, a little bit of sweetness above that, and then um, 
Yeah, so you've got the breadiness in there, that little bit of sweet, uh, caramel and sweetness and things like I said. Then yeah, there's a wee bit of hoppy bitterness and just that little bit of oily, fruity character. But all in all, a really nice paleo, this one, and um, it's not going to be too hard to drink the litre of it, I have to say. But yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. So this was actually our first Bionic Brew beer tried here at the Bionic Brew Tap Room in Nantong in uh, Shenzhen. So let's leave it at that for this one. I think we'll do one more tasting and that'll probably be uh, the end of our time here at Bionic Brew. But I'll catch you guys in a second with something else. Cheers. All right, guys, so I'll just give you a little look at the food menu here then at Bionic Brew. So they actually have these little uh, QR code things that you use on your phone to order, but they did manage to find a paper version of the menu for us to take a little look at for the video. So, um, yeah, you've got a good few things in your appetizers here, waffle fries, uh, beer battered onion rings, sweet potato fries, turmeric cauliflower, beetroot hummus and bread, and fried chicken. Um, so all of which sound pretty nice. You know, you're talking about, uh, you know, the first one, 35 uh, RMB is a little bit more than £3.50, near or £4 sterling, something like that. So maybe add on 10% and then you get the pounds uh, sterling Hong Kong dollar sort of value there and then yeah times again by about 1.1 for the euro and 1.2 for the uh, the US dollar rate but yeah um, they've got quite a few different uh, burgers and things like that here um, the classic Cali patty melt the blue cheese Cali patty melt bionic Cali melt smoky bacon cheeseburger sounds like it would have been quite nice the classic cheeseburger beyond meat burger which is a vegan one and then yeah down here They've got chicken and waffles, which sounds like it could have been pretty good as well. Um, yeah, I'm quite tempted by that, I have to say, the fried chicken, but it sounds really good. Then up here, they've got a few different wraps, beetroot and hummus and falafel wrap, chicken Caesar wrap, buffalo chicken wrap, and then spicy Thai. Price-wise, it's pretty damn good, actually. I have to say that for them. And then down here, they've got some uh, desserts as well, hot and fresh waffle with ice cream. So um, yeah, we'll just need to see what we actually order here at uh, Bionic Brew, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But pretty good food menu, I have to say. Well done to them for that. Alright guys, so yeah, um, as you saw in that last tasting, the food just arrived. So I have a beef cheeseburger toasty sandwich, which I think look, looks really interesting. It was kind of one of the more quirky things on the menu. Ang went for uh, a sausage platter, which I have to say looks pretty decent. And uh, we've also got a little beer flight thing as well so um yeah let's have a little look at this sandwich and uh, see how it turns out i'm very curious about the food right guys so let's have a little look at this food i have to say it, it does look pretty damn good so yeah fries look pretty nice actually seasoned salt and pepper good oh yeah pretty nicely done seasoning is good so you can have these on your own on their own, I should say. My English was terrible these days. Yeah, try it with a little bit of ketchup. Yeah, pretty happy with that. That is pretty nice. So, let's have a little look at these sausages then before we try the big heavy cheeseburger sandwich. So, yeah, we've got a little bit of a sausage here. It looks a little bit like a bratwurst, but I'm not 100% sure. The other one looks a little bit like a Nuremberger, and the other one's maybe like a kind of Cumberland English sausage. But yeah, this guy here looks quite nice. It's not going to focus because my face is there. You can see this one looks a bit more like a kind of bratwurst. Mm. Yeah, definitely kind of bratwurst. Quite juicy, quite nicely seasoned. Maybe a little bit more peppery in the aftertaste as well. As you'll know if you've watched the channel for any length of time, I love my German sausages. I take my sausages very seriously. So yeah, the bratwurst is all right, but not, it's a little bit more spicy, I think, than what you'll find in uh, Germany itself. Let's try the Nuremberger type sausage and see what it's like. So yeah, you see inside that there? Looks good, actually. I love my Nuremberger sausages. One of my favorite type of sausages, in fact. That's good. The herbal character in this is really, really nice. So, yeah, at least we know they've got good, um, yeah, definitely some good Nuremberg here. That's really juicy. 
really nice and kind of herbal into the aftertaste as well. Let's have a wee look at that um, kind of more Cumberland type sausage as well, the curly one. So we've got a nice bit in the end here. There's a wee bit of sauerkraut here as well, but I have to admit I never took to sauerkraut in honesty. So you can see this bit here, again, it's not focusing so well because my face is face recognition. It's got all of that kind of technology, the camera. But yeah, nice and crispy. This one, the meat looks good if you look inside it. Really nice. So let's have a wee look at the, um, the flavour of this thing. It looks like it's really nicely cooked. Mmm. I'm not sure exactly what kind of sausage that is, but it's nice, actually. We've got a wee bit of salami here as well. Let's see what the salami's like. Mmm. Looks more like a chorizo, actually. That came with the beer flight. Chorizo, yeah. Absolutely chorizo. And that's good as well. I need to ask them what chorizo they're using there, because it's got a really nice balance of like spice and meatiness to it. It's kind of like old, some cross between chorizo and old school American pepperoni. But let's have a taste of this sandwich then and see what it's all about. Just there. Uh, look at that. That looks pretty nice. Mm, that's going to be nice. Oh, I'm dropping little bits of it. Well, there's a wee bit of onion in that. I'm going to take the onion out of it because, yeah, I really do not like onion. But that's just me. Get rid of the onions. My mum used to put onions in everything when I was wee. And so I just developed a kind of dislike of onions. <laughs> but yeah, let's try it without the onions then. Let's do it. This should be good. It's got blue cheese in it. Oh, I love blue cheese. Really excited for that. Let's take a look at that. Now that we've got no onions in it, it should be good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. The blue cheese just gives you that slightly stronger flavour. The beef is quite juicy. It's well done right enough. Maybe making this a little bit less well done would just give you that wee bit more flavour. But it's, de it's different kinds of cheddar that's in here. And also that kind of blue cheese. Um, this is really good actually. A really nice sandwich. Mm. Yeah. Pretty happy with that, I have to say. Straightforward, satisfying. If you're drinking a few beers, yeah, you will enjoy this. So I think that's everything we need to say about the food for just now. Quite happy with it. So, uh, yeah. Catch you guys in a little second with something else. Maybe do another one or two beer tastings. I'll catch you guys in just a wee second. Cheers. All right, guys. So uh, quite cool to see that they've got a little bit of merchandise here. So, yeah. They've got the Hoppy 420, uh, which I thought was quite funny. I wonder if that's uh, translated properly. You find a lot of things like that in China that just don't translate properly and they end up quite funny. But yeah, you've got your little sort of tote bag and things there underneath uh, this thing too. Then you've got your little beer can cooler, another little tote bag there which looks good. The bionic brew hat, the one with the rabbit. And then you've also got a kind of hoodie as well, which is... Uh, it's quite nice, all next to the sort of record type thing. But um, yeah, nice little set of merchandise here at Bionic Brew in Shenzhen. Right guys, so time for our third and final tasting then here at Bionic Brew in Nantong in Shenzhen. So uh, yeah, I will admit I'm a little bit buzzed from that litre of paleo that I had unexpectedly in the last tasting. But we're going to round off, as we always do, with something a little bit darker, and this should be quite nice. So, beer number three is one of Bionic Blue's own beers once again. This is called Chocolate City. It comes in at 6.2% ABV, and this one is a porter. So, um, yeah, I asked for a smaller glass of this one, obviously, which is definitely required after uh, our last beer. But, um, yeah, so... You can see that this beer, and to not shake the table, uh, you can see that this beer has poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour, as you might expect. And uh, yeah, not too much in the way of visible carbonation with this one. When it came out, it had a nice kind of uh, quarter finger of a frothy, I would have said kind of medium tan head. 
But yeah, this is pretty much what you would expect appearance-wise from a porter, of course. A lovely sort of dark ebony rosewood colour there. So let's have a wee look at the nose on this one then and see what it's all about. Oh, that's actually a very sweet porter. Um, the nose is, is really very, very nice. Um, the porter, of course, is a style that originated in England. It is an ale, so uh, top fermenting yeast, higher temperature fermentation. But that smells really, really nice. Um, very smooth, like kind of dry chocolate, like chocolate brownie and chocolate sponge cake and stuff like that coming out of this. Um, lovely smelling beer, I have to say. I think this is going to be good. So, um, spilled a little bit down there. There you go. But yeah, um, the glass is very, very full. I will say that. So, um, aroma-wise, the backbone of this beer is a lovely kind of sort of rye bready type character. There's also a lot of like chocolate cake in this one. If you think about that little bit of cake edge that you get when you, or the edge of the cake, you know, the bit that's been in contact with the baking tray, it's kind of like that. So there's a lot of like chocolate sponge cake in this one, quite a little bit of rye bread, good little bit of vanilla coming out of it as well. So, uh, yeah, vanilla, chocolate sponge, brown bread, rye bread, things like that. Quite a lot of vanilla, like I said. Little elements of like nuttiness, like pecans, almonds, walnuts actually. Um, but yeah, there's a good little bit of chocolate in this one, like uh, milk chocolate, I would say. Sort of 30, 40% cocoa chocolate coming out of it. There's a wee bit of brown sugar in there, you know, Werther's Original, Butter Candy, Butter Scotch. Um, so yeah, Butter Candy, Butter Scotch, Werther's Original, um, and a little bit of a leathery brown sugar. There's quite a wee bit of phenol coming out of this one on the fruity side of things, but we'll get to that a little bit later. The yeasty side of this beer at the back of the nose is like a sort of kind of marzipani chocolate sponge almost so yeah quite a little bit of that coming out of this one at the back of the nose like chocolate cake chocolate sponge stuff like that um i don't know if there's too much else to say about it that yeah like marzipan chocolate sponge at the back of the nose for sure and then um yeah, I think that's it, to be honest with you. We've covered the sort of malty and yeasty side of the beer when we say that. On the hoppy side of things, and remember, the hop, the, the porter is not the most hop forward of beer styles. Um, it's got a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of woodiness, some nice kind of uh, floral notes, and they're mainly quite grassy. English hops, of course, like Bramling's Cross and things like this, are the kind of go-tos when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to these kind of porter beers. So yeah, a little bit earthy, a little bit woody, wee bit floral, but mainly kind of wet, leafy, and sort of grassy. The fruity side of this beer for me is more, yeah, it's got a little bit of like figgy character, a little bit of like black currant. Um, yeah, a little bit figgy, a little bit black currant-y. And then, Yeah, fig, prune plum sort of thing, black currant. I think that describes the fruity side of this one quite adeptly and honestly. So um, yeah, as I always say, take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of your beer, but we are going to get stuck into this one now. So this is the Chocolate City, a 6.2% porter, our last beer here at Bionic Brew in Nantong, Shenzhen. Yan Bei. That's pretty nice actually. Very sweet and very sort of slick and smooth uh, porter actually. Um, that's really nice. Yeah, I have to say, I do quite like how that goes together. Um, very slick, very smooth porter, leaning toward the sweeter end of the style actually. It's not. Um, yeah, it's got this lovely kind of dry sweetness to it, and you only get the real roasty, toasty sort of porter 
backbone into the aftertaste. But um, yeah, it's really nice how that goes together actually. This is really pretty solid in fact. Mm. Yeah, I have to say, I do like that with this one. Um, yeah, so where do we start with this beer then? Middle third of your palate. The backbone of the beer, you've got that roasty, toasty, well-fired bread crust in there, and that lingers into the aftertaste. Further forward on that middle third of the palate, you start to get this little bit of like woody character out of it. Then the next layer up, you have um, the kind of cake edge that I was talking about, like that sort of toasty edge of like a chocolate sponge cake. Uh, nice sort of rye bready layer then a wholemeal brown bready layer and then you get this quite sweet layer of like vanilla chocolate sponge cake. The chocolate sponge cake has uh, some nutty character in it like a sort of pecan almond, pardon me, walnutty type quality so that is pretty nice as well I have to say but then pardon me on top of the, uh, the sort of cakey layer you start to get the chocolatey side of the beer. So for me, the chocolatey side of the beer um, at the back of that middle third of your palate, it's maybe about 60% uh, cocoa chocolate, and as you move further forward, it's about 40% cocoa chocolate, more milk chocolate. So remember, sweeter flavours come out further forward in your palate, more uh, dry and bitter flavours come out further back, actually. So um, yeah, that's quite interesting with this one. But um, yeah, mix the kind of chocolatey flavours in this one, as we said, above that you start to get the brown sugar. So there's a layer of sort of toasty brown sugar, a more like a kind of circle of a more leathery brown sugar, then a big oily sweet caramel in the dead centre of your palate there, and a wee bit of like a roasty biscuity character sitting above that in fact, so that's quite nice. So yeah, the way that that goes together, I think, is, uh, is really nice in this one. Um, into the aftertaste, I see you get a little bit of an almost kind of marzipan -y taste out of this beer. But um, yeah, I think at that, we've covered everything about the middle third of the palate in this beer, and that is the most complex part of this one, for sure. Um, yeah, back third of your palate, you've got all the similar layers. You've got the kind of roasty toasty well fire bread crust, the sort of cake crust, the rye bread, the wholemeal brown bread, the chocolatey sponge, and then yeah, you can feel some of the toastier aspects of the chocolate and the kind of more leathery brown sugar sitting on top of that. The yeasty side of things is a little bit more kind of brown bready and uh, a little bit more cakey and grainy and dry into the aftertaste as well. And again, yeah, definitely back third of your palate, the flavour is taller. And as you move further forward into the middle third of your tongue, it condenses down and uh, squashes together that little bit more. So um, yeah, that covers the malty and yeasty side of the beer, but definitely into the aftertaste. You've got this sort of like nutty, chocolatey, dry character just lingering there. On the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate there's a wee bit of like earthiness there. As you move further forward, it's a little bit more kind of woody and nutty. That spreads a bit further forward along the front sides of your palate there. You've got some more floral aromaticity as you reach the front corners of the tongue. Then around the front curve of the palate, it's that little bit lighter and more um, sort of grassy. So yeah. Yeah. For me, the woody nutty thing really lingers with this one into the aftertaste so yeah I really do like how that um, how all of that goes together actually um, yeah interesting stuff but let's look at the front third of your palate then just to kind of round off the tasting section so yeah uh, border region between front third and middle third of your palate you get that little bit of bready build up in there you've got the rye bread in the base the brown bread in the middle then the kind of more almost like a toasty cakey kind of character on top of that base of the front three part, the roasted well fire bread crust, the cake edge, the rye bread, the brown bread, the kind of chocolate layer, then you've got that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters kind of roll the way out of the beer. So um, yeah, the way that that goes together is, is quite nice too, but let's look at the fruity side of things with this beer. So yeah, keep knocking the table. The fruity side of this beer for me it's um, 
I would say, yeah, the fruity side of things uh, with this beer for me, if you go to the, that oily bubble at the back of that front third of your palate, you get a little bit of a sort of plummy note out of it and maybe some drier prunes underneath. You've got a wee touch of uh, kind of figgy character uh, as you move further forward. So yeah, plums, prunes, a little bit of a sort of figgy note out of it. And as you move into the front half of that front third of your tongue, it's a little bit more kind of like black currenty and there's maybe just a little bit of a blackberry sort of note there into the aftertaste too. It has got a little bit of this, um, yeah, it has got a little bit of a kind of phenol note to it, this one, you know, like sort of cough syrupy medicine. There's a wee bit of that going on in here, but otherwise it's uh, it's really quite nice so that uh, it, it, it really does remind me more of like a kind of marzipan nutty chocolate cake this one it's really interesting a very well done porter beer actually and quite different to what I've had in this style category before um, so certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again mouthfeel wise for me mid-bodied smooth carbonation a mix of oiliness and slickness in there kind of gets drier into the aftertaste your IBU in this beer is sort of you know 50 40 or 50 IBUs I would say but you know, you could conflate the dryness in this beer with bitterness. So yeah, quite a dry beer, but a really kind of lingering dry sweetness out of this one, which I have to say I do quite like. Um, so yeah, the malty base is drier underneath, smoother in the middle, and then dry and sweet on top. The fruitiness has a wee bit of juiciness to it, but yeah, you've got a little bit of bitterness there too. But overall, a really, really nice porter. And in honesty, when I think about the beers that I've tried, um, that one would potentially be the pick of the bunch. I think that's potentially the best beer that I've had in this video so far. So um, yeah, I think we can uh, leave it at that for uh, for this one. So yeah, this was the Chocolate City, a 6.2% porter from uh, Bionic Brew in uh, Nantong and Shenzhen. I think we'll leave it there. I'll catch you guys in a little second, give you my final thoughts on my time here. But uh, yeah, it'd be really cool to try this one as our last tasting. Catch you guys in just a second. Cheers. Alright, so I spotted something else quite cool on the wall here. So in Shenzhen, they have a beer festival called Electric City. So yeah, they've got the posters for this festival from uh, the past couple of years. So there you can see 2018, then 2019, 2020 and 2021. And obviously that was kind of when we were getting into uh, COVID pandemic time, but it's quite cool because you can see um, some of the different breweries and things down here. So you've got a lot of different breweries from across China, a few from Hong Kong and things. And uh, obviously this changes a little bit as you go on, but I thought this was a really nice touch in the, uh, the tap room to, to have these, but apparently this is next month in November, so maybe we'll need to go along and uh, have a little <coughs> look at the Electric City Beer Festival at some stage, but I quite liked seeing these, that was cool. All right guys, well that is our time over then at Bionic Brew here in Nantong in Shenzhen. So we had a really nice couple of hours just kind of chilling here and uh, trying some of the different beers. So we got to try a Pilsner from Daybake Brewery who are another one of the local Shenzhen breweries and that was really nice. I didn't realise it was one of their beers until um, after filming it so that's why that video, that part of the video is a little bit odd but yeah um, we tried the bionic brew paleo which was really good their kind of flagship beer then we tried their porter which i was really really impressed with so yeah um, impressed with the quality of the beers here angie one of the co-owners was working in the bar which was great and uh, yeah she gave us a lot of good tips for uh, visiting shenzhen so i think ang and i will have to come and visit shenzhen a little bit more often and maybe we'll go to the electric beer festival yeah. so yeah we'll just need to see what happens but really nice time here at bionic brew i think in total we spent maybe around five or six hundred rmb so that is yeah about 50 60 pounds sterling something like that so that is maybe 55 euros 60 dollars american something like that and for the amount of beer and the amount of food and stuff we had that's not bad i have to say it's not bad at all but yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This was the Bionic Brew Tap Room in Nandong, Shenzhen, 
and uh, hopefully we can do some more out and about videos while we're here in Shenzhen, but I'm sure I'll be back at some point soon. Catch you guys in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And thank you to my good friend Ang for joining in with this one. Catch you guys in a second. Cheers.